Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Why does the mainstream media not want you to see Sound of Freedom? I just saw the film last night. It was absolutely incredible. Very moving, very difficult to watch, but also very cinema cinematographically, if that's a word, exceptional. And the ending was in many ways fulfilling. Uh, there's a lot of hope in this film and I recommend everybody go see it. You can look that up. It's pretty easy to buy tickets. In fact, they even have a pay it forward option where you can buy tickets for other people. But so I'm watching this film and I knew the media coverage about it was bad from the mainstream media. And I just accept, expected that to be so. Um, but I went and saw the film for myself and I thought, wow, uh, this film is the most non-political, non-divisive message you could ever have. It wasn't as if they portrayed some political party as pro-child trafficking, one against. There was no mention of Republicans or Democrats or liberals or conservative. In fact, there was very little reference to any government agencies at all. There's just sort of the beginning part where it sees Jim Caviezel playing Tim Ballard as working for Homeland Security. He spends a little bit of a time in the office and he's got a boss and he's trying to help him out, but Washington says no, etc. There's no, it's your basic, you know, government references, but there's nothing in it that's political whatsoever. No mention of a president, no mention of a congressman, nothing. It's just guy works for an agency, that agency does good work and it portrays Homeland Security doing a very good job. Um, and then basically there are limits to what the American policing services can do in other countries. And then, so he just decides to go independent. It's not anti the government, it's not anti-Democrat, but nothing. It's just simply about guy is a hero, he puts on a sting operation, and he finds a way to save children from child trafficking. But you gotta check out what they're saying about this film to see just how crazy it is that the left is going after it. And you seem pretty familiar with him because he doesn't really hide his association with this real wild plot uh, that that involves, you know, drinking the blood of children and things like that. No, he doesn't hide it at all. And you have a lot of people who are in this world of QAnon who say, oh, they don't know what that is. They've never heard of it. They're just asking questions. With somebody like Jim Caviezel, he is openly embracing it. He's openly using its catchphrases and its concepts. He's speaking at QAnon conventions. And this film is being marketed to either specific QAnon believers or to people who believe all of the same tenets as QAnon, but claim they don't know what it is. Okay, and the sound of freedom. Let's just stop that there because they just go on with more of this nonsense. But let's actually look at what they're saying. So what these people are saying is that Jim Caviezel is a QAnon weirdo because he spoke at a QAnon conference. Well, I'll tell you what. Jim Caviezel spoke at the LifeSite News Conference last year in Florida. I was there and I saw the video of his QAnon conference speech and it was pretty much the exactly the same thing. And um, what he said was abortion's bad you know, God, Christ, freedom. It was a very good speech. It was basically the same speech. This is what you do when you have a speech, by the way. I give speeches sometimes. And you don't rewrite your speech all the time. This isn't a, a slight against Jim Caviezel. I'm just saying his speech was, you know, God back in the schools, God back in public, no abortion, traditional marriage, Jesus Christ is Lord. Very, very basic stuff. Very, very good stuff. Very well-delivered speech. Nothing conspiratorial about it at all. And let's look, see, you see this guy here on this... Um, it's this CNN, um, we should start calling them CNN because they're the real conspiracy theorists. Um, this CNN reporter, he says Jim Caviezel's, he's insinuating that Jim Caviezel's into this idea of drinking the blood of children and this is what Q QAnon's all about. Well, that's very interesting because what has the mainstream media, namely CNN, reported about QAnon? It's nothing like what he's saying. So this is, uh, you know, an analysis. This is from 2020. I think. A uh, CNN reporter went to two different QAnon events. Here's what he found. This is what he said. So CNN's talking, and we know CNN has no credibility, so this is no shocker, but this is what he's saying. And uh, one in Los Angeles was a march through Hollywood that portrayed itself as an anti-pedophilia protest. Let's just stop that there. Portraying itself as anti-pedophilia. Not just these people, who, whatever they believe, I don't buy into the QAnon conspiracy theory, that's a whole other thing. Nonetheless, these people are marching and saying they're against pedophilia. 
and they say portray itself as anti-pedophilia. Why would they say that? Why wouldn't they just say that's what they stand for? Would they do that with George Floyd? Would they do that with a, you know, a pride parade? They portray themselves as pro-LGBT. No, they would just say these are pro-LGBT protesters, right? Its organizers were careful not to explicitly embrace the QAnon conspiracy theory, so they didn't embrace it. Uh, even as they implicitly signaled they support it and repeated its disinformation. Which disinformation? That they're against pedophilia? Is that disinformation? The other event, QCon Live, took place in Arizona. Um, it could easily have been mistaken for a grassroots meeting to help re-elect the president. Ah, okay. Um, both showed, uh, the supporters, um, sorry, what both showed is that for many of its supporters, QAnon is not just a set of conspiracy theory. For them, it's a way to distract themselves from the failures of a president they see as a hero, blah, blah, blah. So, obviously, what CNN is doing here is they're saying, Anyone who is against Joe Biden, anyone who was for Donald Trump, must be part of a, um, a QAnon conspiracy, and really they're just mad about the presidency. And here's what they say, uh, the march in Hollywood. Pedophiles, you're on notice. One person signed at the event in Hollywood said. Why is that bad? Another with the material, including a symbol, and it said, and I mean you, Hollywood. And then there was the hashtag, save the children. Well, they say, well, save the children is a respected humanitarian organization. So clearly they're trying to grift off of that. Anyway, um, let's look at this idea where they said they like to drink the blood of children. Jim Caviezel's never said anybody likes to drink the blood of children. Jim Caviezel has said that adrenochrome is a real thing. Now, we're just going to ask ourselves, is it a real thing? Well, let's look it up. If you look up Adrena, I just looked up Adrenochrome confirmed on Google here. Uh, the first one is QAnon's Adrenochrome quackery, quackery. The next one, interestingly, is Adrenochrome from Wikipedia. And it says it is a chemical compound, so I guess it's not a conspiracy, produced by the oxidization of adrenaline. It was a subject of research from the 50s to the 70s, etc., etc., etc. et cetera. Um, now let's look it up on YouTube. So I just typed it in, okay? YouTube, this is not misinformation. This is your website. Uh, these are your videos. One here's from Dr. Phil. Woman claims her missing daughter was tortured for adrenochrome, okay? And here's an interesting one. This uh, shocked me. This is from four years ago from CBS News New York. And let's just watch this for half a second here controversial new treatment that may hold promise but at a price it does appear to reverse the aging process dr jesse carmazin is talking about transfusions with the young blood from teenagers and he says it just may turn back the hands of time that blood is going to patients over 35 as part of a clinical trial called ambrosia where subjects paid eight thousand dollars to get the rich growth factors found in the platelets in blood's plasma there's pretty much people from most states, people from overseas, from Europe and Australia. There have not been any published results, but the intriguing concept still found its way into pop culture. Okay, so hold on a second here. This is CBS News New York portraying a doctor saying that this is basically the fountain of youth and that this comes from young people. It would stand to reason that if it's good from the youth of teenagers that the younger would be even better. Uh, this obviously, we know that they do medical research on infant fetuses, like bodies and things like that for uh, stem cell research. So it's not as if this is out of the realm of possibility. So if we just sort of summarize here, they're saying that Sound of Freedom is a QAnon conspiracy. Then they say QAnon conspiracy is drinking the blood of children. But in reality, Jim Caviezel is simply against human trafficking, and he has expressed that he believes that adrenochrome, i.e. some sort of chemical compound which does exist, which allegedly would use the blood of children, is used for anti-aging. Then we look to the CBS mainstream news available on YouTube, not lab labeled as misinformation, that shows that it actually is a thing that's been in the works that people have used. Um, What's the conspiracy here? 
you know, respectfully. What's, what's, what part of this isn't true? And let's just see, um, we'll watch this clip here about just how ridiculous this is and how the way that the left-wing media, the mainstream media, is trying to bury this movie is actually just playing into the hands of the pedophiles. Hating this movie. You know, I can't understand it. The film was made, produced, written like five years, six years ago, way before anyone heard the name QAnon. I still don't even know what QAnon is. Uh, in the meantime, they're trying to connect it to some conspiracy when in fact, like you said, this is a true story. These are real kids. I mean, I'm, I, these kids are my friends. They're young adults now, the ones that were rescued. They're gonna come out soon and tell their story. It's gonna be very awkward when the mainstream media comes after these kids next and accuses them of being part of some conspiracy when in fact, they were rescued from a life of rape. It's, it's, it's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen in the media, perhaps. I mean, this publication says The Sound of Freedom is a superhero movie for dads with brain worms and that it fetishizes the torture of its child victims. Is that what the movie does? It absolutely does not do that. It tells a story based in truth. And, you know, I, what I think is happening, Jesse, I think that the left and the, these, these media outlets, they don't want to have a discussion that this film is going to compel. A discussion about why 85,000 children showed up unaccompanied at the border and got released into the interior of a country that is uh, the highest consuming country for child exploitation material on the planet. They don't want to talk about why they, these same publications are pushing an agenda to change the word pedophile to minor attracted persons in order to normalize sexual activity with children. I think that's what they're trying to avoid, and they know this film's gonna shine a light on all of the things, all the atrocities happening in children, and so they have to discredit it by lying about it. So what would their motivation be to discredit a movie that's trying to shine a spotlight onto atrocities committed against children? Well, they, if, 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 if the truth of human trafficking and child trafficking and child explo exploitation were to be uh, br brought to bear, brought to light, then they would have to have a debate, a discussion that they don't want to have about, again, these policies around sexualizing children or allowing children to consent at a young age to do anything and everything, uh, which would eventually include being, you know, identifying as an adult, perhaps, and having sex with pedophiles. I hunt pedophiles. I've been hunting them for 20 years, and they are watching this, and they're salivating. They are happy that Rolling Stones and The Guardian are ripping on a movie that exposes them. So I don't like the fact that these media outlets are, in fact, wittingly or unwittingly, running interference for human traffickers and pedophiles. So Tim Ballard there is very measured in the way he talks about this. He doesn't go into why they would not want to have that debate. He just brings up this idea that if you blow the roof off of this whole thing, then basically the mainstream media is going to not want to talk about this. But why do you think they wouldn't want to talk about it? Well, here's a potential answer. So here's a story from uh, the post-millennial. Uh, I think that's Jack, Jack Posobiec with Human Events. Uh, good work for them. And it's called Busted. Rolling Stone, remember, Rolling Stone is, is one of the ones going after this film. Rolling Stone editor-in-chief spiked reporting on friend getting arrested for child porn. Here's the story. A new report has revealed... So remember, this is a mainstream media source that is going after the movie, okay? As Tim Ballard's saying, they probably don't want to have this discussion. Why don't they want to have this discussion? Well, maybe because they've got their own dirty laundry and skeletons in the closet they don't want you to see. A new report has revealed that the man who edited Rolling Stone's initial story on the FBI raid of ABC producer James Meek, who was later revealed to have been charged with possessing child pornography, removed all references to the charge from the report and was an associate of the accused uh, pr producer. On October 18th, former Rolling Stone journalist Tatiana Siegel broke the news that the FBI had raided Meek's home in April and that the Emmy award-winning ABC producer had disappeared from the public eye. According to a new report from NPR, Rolling Stone editor-in-chief Noah Schachtman had removed from her piece key information from Siegel's sources that Meek had been raided by the FBI as a part of child pornography federal, federal investigation. Okay, you can read more of this if you'd like. What is this saying to us? This is saying to us 
that major mainstream media sources, Rolling Stone, CNN, etc., when the rubber meets the road and it's time to discuss the reality of their buddies being involved in the stuff that is the fruit of child trafficking, that they cover up for their buddies. Why would they cover up for their buddies? Why would they do that? Here's the thing, my friends. People with guilty consciences cover up for other guilty people. Because people who have guilty consciences and they have skeletons in their closets, they want others to not be exposed because it could lead to them being exposed. This is the way that criminal operations work. So if you look at how gangs work, what do they do? What's the initiation process for you to join a gang? The initiation process for you to join a gang is almost always that, um, well, it's, it's almost always that you have to commit some heinous crime, usually murder, in order to join the gang. And why is that? Because once they've convinced you to do this crime, now that you're in the gang, you can't leave without incriminating yourself. This is why um, the Hells Angels, for example, the phrase that they use, and I know this because I used to work at a bar where these Hells Angels guys would basically run the place. Those are some crazy stories there. Um, blood in, blood out. So you have to kill to get in, and you either got to kill yourself to get out. That's, the, that's what it means. Uh, they do let some people out. Uh, just They just do. But uh, generally speaking, that's the way. So you kill somebody to get in. And that way, and everyone knows about it. So if you're going to turn on your buddies in the gang, well, they're going to make sure that they have the evidence that you murdered somebody. So you're stuck. This is why, if we look at this from a psychological perspective, why would anyone on earth ever take out information that would indicate or expose somebody for being a child predator. Like that's, again, this is, this is not partisan. Um, this is not like a pro-life issue where people debate the life of the unborn. Obviously the unborn are, are living human being children and, and it's terrible to, to, to terminate them. And this is wrong. But I'm, what I'm saying is even in this world where people debate that, let's just set that aside for a second. This isn't about gay marriage. This isn't about climate change. This is about children. But they still can't admit it and they still have to vilify. This is showing the true colors of the leftists. And you have to understand something here. All of this stuff is connected. The rainbow lifestyle, the pro-choice lifestyle, the changing of the identities, open borders. It's all part of the same demonic philosophy. And why? Why is that? Because the same thread in all of those things is a rejection of nature. It's a rejection of nature. Okay? And if you read Romans chapter 1, I don't have a chapter and verse right in front of me, my Bible's downstairs, but look up Romans chapter 1. Actually, in fact, let's just open it up here quick. We can do that on the internet. So let's go to the, um, um, let's go to BibleGateway.com. And we'll look up Romans chapter 1. I'll use a version that everybody can read well. I'll use the, uh, the Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. We'll go Romans 1. Okay. So here's Romans chapter 1. Make it a little bit smaller. So we can all see it. Okay. So... Here it is, starting at chapter 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of men who by their wickedness suppress the truth. Suppress the truth. So you have, so the wrath of God against those who suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. No one could deny that these things are true. That's the point. Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature, namely his eternal power and deity, has been clearly perceived in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. These people who suppress these natural law truths are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal men 
of birds, animals, or reptiles. So he's talking about paganism here. Therefore, so this is the progression of what happens. Therefore, God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity. So you reject God, and these people have all reject God, and gone after paganism, environmentalism, and so forth. Then God gives them up. So their punishment is them being allowed to fall into their darkest nature, and their hearts go to impurity, to dishonoring, the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. This is impure sexual acts. Because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator. So, you worship Mother Earth, you reject God, God gives you over to your darkest lusts, which include all of the sexual proclivities that is part of the rainbow movement. For this reason, God gave them up to the dishonorable passions. There are honorable passions. If there are dishonorable passions, there means there are honorable passions. Man and wife in the bonds of marriage, honorable passion. Outside the bonds of marriage, outside of man and, man and woman, dishonorable passion. He goes on to say, the women exchanged natural relations for unnatural, and the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in their own persons the due penalty for their error. Okay. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a base mind and to improper conduct. They were filled with all manner of wickedness, evil, covetedness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malignity. They are gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Let's just go over those quickly here. Wickedness, check. Evil, check. Covetousness, what's that? Socialism, check. Malice. Check. Envy. What is that? Trying to tear others down because you want their stuff. Very similar to covetousness. This is, this is reparations. This is, this is uh, wealth distribution. Check. Murder. Abortion. Check. Euthanasia. Check. Strife. Causing chaos amongst the population. Check. Deceit. Lying to people. Hmm. Remember 2020? Check. Malignity. Oh, same, similar idea. They are gossips. Hmm. What does the average leftist do? What, are they, what, what magazines does the average person read in our culture? Us Weekly, People Magazine, etc. Check. Slanderers, saying wrong things about people. What do they do to Jim Caviezel? Check. Haters of God, look what they do when the Supreme Court says you have to have God in the public square. Check. Um, let's skip to this one. Diso disobedient to parents, don't tell your kids about your identity transition. Check. Ruthless, obviously. So this is what's happening. You can make these decisions for yourself. But it seems to me that they have a guilty conscience and they don't want uncovered what they're actually a part of. And the evidence seems to suggest that. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. This has been the Kennedy Report. Until next time, God bless.